Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, the results of last month's Steam hardware survey, they're in. We're doing all right, guys. We're doing all right. And Sega squirts classic pixels all over our face, chest, and neck. Well, they tried, because most of it kind of ended up on the sheets. Battle Chasers Night War involves no chasing because it's a turn-based RPG and Mark loves you too, Cat Daddy. And I may or may not have spent too long looking up Rick James-related cat lyrics to tell you that Feral's Linux guy has moved to Unity. The beta for Love for Dead 2 has vanished, but what does it mean? And then we throw chairs at Albion Online. Is it the MMO we want or the MMO we deserve? No one deserves an MMO, you Filthy heathen. Um, I'm Vince Stone here at LGC Axel, switching the bits, uh, running the boards. Uh, I occasionally pop in, chime in, like, oh, remember me? I'm here too. Uh, joined every week. Our man up north, the Torontoan himself, one Master Swing. He, he's the uh, referred to as the guy who wears the metal t shirts. That's how most people know him. Yeah. Yeah. And Seems uh, legit. across the pond, Space Britannia, one Pedro Mateus Hello. by way of Portugal. Um, yes. Yeah, definitely went back to the island. And together with you, at home, chat room dynamic, joining us, helping us form Go Game Ultron. Before we get started, we like to see what's going on in each other's life. Organs, um, as you can see, the video is a lot clearer than it normally is because we are doing our best to tell Discord's audio and video to eat a bag of dicks. Not that there's anything wrong with eating a dick, just not the whole bag. <laughs> that shit's greedy, son. Unless you brought enough for everyone in class. Um, we're going to get back on the Jitsi sauce playing with it this is kind of a test run so we should uh, depending on how much fire we have to deal with we'll reconstruct the bifrost that'll be a thing what's up jay baby well as as um chat realm has clearly discovered jill and i are like a uh, carry from legion where sometimes sometimes we're a dude sometimes we're a chick sometimes <laughs> we exist in different locations but we're both the same person no I, I, I got a, I got a question for you guys because this is All something right. I ran into and spent like a good half a day working on if what's the point of a service account if that service account expires after 30 days service account uh, you, you're gonna narrow this down a little bit then as as in like an account you would run say a process under oh like a user account mm, security. Um, for uh, admin switch i don't listen man i'm only answering like if somebody came up and they needed they just needed an answer not necessarily a correct one they just like, <laughs> just like <laughs> this fills the answer slot it's a security thing don't worry about it and they're like oh okay and then they leave me alone right <laughs> see I'm, I'm at that point in my career where i get into fights with security people because i'm like no that's stupid you're just making it needlessly <laughs> difficult for the sake of making it appear secure true that uh, yep but but anyways, Pedro, I heard you got the freaking short bus of 4K monitors. <laughs> uh, I got the cheap bus of 4K monitors. Uh, you the mean the uh, Acer BH? You mean, you <laughs> no, it's the LG 24UD58, which means that it's a 24-inch uh, IPS UHD uh, with um, it has FreeSync. Mm-hmm. Not that I can use it, but it has it. it uh, I did say a while back when I saw it on Amazon, if this ever drops below 250 pounds, I'll buy it. And I put it on my wish list. And I got an email from Amazon saying, yo, this dropped by like a significant chunk. Do you want to buy it? Oh, 245 pounds. Yes, please. Hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, the only, I mean, even at 28 inches, like a uh, giggity, uh, Without you know, because once you do DPI scaling, get your fonts and everything set up, it's fine until you get like slammed into that one application that refuses to obey. You know, like, oh mm -hmm. boy, then you got to get so you mean, you mean Steam, and, yeah, Steam. Well, I, <laughs> yeah, Steam needs a custom theme, which I have, to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that, that's uh, everyone's first thing. Uh, one thing that does not need a custom theme because, well, that bastard wouldn't know what to do with it. That's a horse. Yeah, the the it's a special it's our special short bus horse. It's the Steam Linux update of the week. week. All right. So, uh, software bugs. We're we're talking about security. <laughs> mm -hmm. Here, here's here's one that all that uh, has recently got patched. So, um, 
apparently, once upon a time, you were able to, knowing a specific location in memory, craft a malformed UDP packet to feed to the Steam client, which would let you execute arbitrary remote code. This is bad. Um, mm -hmm. What do you mean, man? I mean, it's like a, well, that's a well, bonus I, I, feature. Right? If, if, if I'm just like sending random packages at your computer, you should probably you should hope that I'm not able to say execute the SU binary. So now I have a shell that I can go fuck around with your system in. But um, it was partially dealt with last year when uh, Valve introduced um, address layer um, ASLR, the uh, software um, memory location randomizer. Mm -hmm. so that you can't yeah. reliably predict where a certain value would be in memory necessarily, uh, which mitigates a large portion of these attacks because you need to be able to craft the UDP packets specifically to inject a command at a specific memory location. Um, they have actually finally fixed it now. So uh, if, if you had some sort of companion exploit to um, figure out what that memory, specific memory location is, uh, you would be able to... Um, you'd still be able to take advantage of this exploit. It's fixed now. It's plugged. And it only took him, what, 10 years to do it? Yeah. Hey, man. <laughs> Ish. <laughs> it's valve time, you know. Buffer overflow is part of the parcel. Programming C++. Um, th this is probably just another example of valve like, oh, right, people are complaining about this. We're rolling your mm -hmm. And uh, the the fact that you couldn't exploit it uh, ever since they introduced the ASLR stuff uh, was great until, let's say, a certain specific uh, speculative execution exploit was discovered in a certain subset of processors, Intel. Uh, <laughs> at which point it would be easy to just spawn a um, an application for the specific purpose of targeting all the uh, different RAM blocks that uh, the user had available and just use Spectre to try and track it down. But they fixed it, supposedly. Remains to be seen. I, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can all sleep <laughs> safe. Uh, hardware surveys, man. Their thing. Uh, oh. uh, who was it? Uh, somebody learned something, didn't they, Pedro? Yeah, they did. Oh, oh yes, uh, learning, the, uh, learning, yes, Pedro. Uh, yes, Pedro. Pedro, Pedro that thing about? you put in the notes and quoted. Yeah, that thing I I, I learned uh, uh, because <laughs> there's a, a teeny tiny portion of the uh, second paragraph uh, before you get to the stats uh, proper that says historically uh, the survey used a client side method to ensure that systems were counted only once a year in order to provide an accurate picture of the entire Steam user population. Oh, that's that's how it works. Okay, right. So, what's the survey for exactly? Because you can trigger that reliably more than once a year. I don't know. <laughs> Here's the thing, man. Uh, what we're looking at is uh, maybe we're up from where we were at. I mean, coming in first mm -hmm. right now with the decline, sixteen oh four Kubuntu. So that's down two point seven five percent naturally. Eighteen oh four LTS is up eleven percent. And uh, seventeen ten is going down naturally in the other. Which come on, just put the other <laughs> stuff in there. That's probably all arch. Um, but here's the thing, man. I mean, if you're looking at uh, the actual percentages, there, man, we have about seven hundred twenty thousand Linux humans currently mm -hmm. gaming, taking these surveys, yeah. man. Yeah, or currently, who whoever is getting the survey, and that, that's. It's it's interesting because Valve actually has the real numbers. They they know that the survey they is crap, but they have an mm -hmm. exact idea of the OS percentage of uh, usage on Steam. So, I mean, why why not just like make it an opt out thing, saying like, hey, we're changing how we're inventorying Steam. We're each install has like a distinct UUID. Uh, we'll track your computer that way. We'll do some fingerprinting. It's opt in, so you can opt out of it if you don't want. Or yeah, and um. Yeah, included as part of the terms and services, and then actually publish some reliable numbers that don't rely yeah. on when the survey deem feels that it's time. Uh, I've, the the stars have aligned, the planets are in tow. Now you can get the Steam hardware survey. Actually, let's let's play a game. When was the last time you got a Steam hardware survey? Uh, about a year ago. Listen, Honey Valve, don't give a damn, man, because I do want to talk about the seven hundred twenty thousand Linux humans based on those numbers. Mm -hmm. You're hundred percent right. Yeah, Valve knows the numbers, and this this is just. 
this is this is fucking fanfic fan service shit they put out so the average person can feel like they're doing something but if you take that number on face value because that number right there is i i think why every indie developer needs to at least consider a linux port as hard as they fucking can because you know that rolls right into like the one percent rule if you're looking at seven hundred twenty thousand people one percent of that's seven thousand two hundred potential sales you know but yep. now granted granted you know your game can't be complete shite it just can't because <laughs> yeah if your game sucks ain't no statistics Pedro is going gonna, gonna, gonna read the rest of my sentence for me <laughs> no <laughs> yeah he basically he, he likes to do that he does or, or like yeah. copy the ex- copy the same sentence and then put it one bullet point lower in the show notes but just change the wording a little bit yeah, pretty much man that's what we're going to Paige Marizo. uh <laughs> yeah you did hit her mark uh no, man. That's what I'm saying. If you get a halfway decent game, and I mean, you can make it work financially, you know, a couple extra thousand sales could be a thing, man. And what, what's, what's even more interesting about that, too, or that, that specific line of thinking is a couple of years ago, we had this scenario where, like, basically, if you put released a game on Linux, more than 1% of people on Linux would buy it mm-hmm. because they're like, because they were trying to prove a point. So that's just like a lot of sales because fuck you, that's why. <laughs> well, I'm guilty Sales of doing that, have... man. Um, yeah. You know, I have every Loki title. And it's like, oh, you collected them? No, I bought them back, you know, in 99, 2000 when they were coming out, except for Heavy Metal. But when we got Steam, Steam back first launched, there was a thing where probably for the first six months, it was completely feasible for me to do exactly what Jordan said. I just buy the damn game. It didn't matter if I played it or not. Just show support. Can't do that. I need it. Hmm. These days, mm. every every morning you wake Freddy, up. Freddy Fish Five. Right. I mean, <laughs> Fre- Freddy yeah. in space. You know the the old shovelware that uh, publishers like to dump on the Steam store. That's passable when you take into account the rest of the shit, like the Unity Ghetto, the asset flips, the complete bullshit that Valve doesn't seem to care about, but can't have anime titties. <laughs> What's up next? Uh, yeah, yeah. What's up next? Up next, we have, well, a disappearing beta. And uh, the I read the little disclaimer that SteamDB has. Uh, don't worry, they'll be a link in the show notes. And they say, what is a SteamDB unknown app? This app has been deleted or hidden to the public. There is extremely limited to no information about this app. We don't even have a name. Uh, yeah, you do. If you go to change 44831961, you see that app was deleted. Previous name, Left for Dead 2 Beta. Yeah. But yeah, the Left for Dead 2 Beta is gone. It disappeared the, the, from the Steam store. The, 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 this, was, this was the Beta Beta, right? Not the Beta yeah, Beta the Beta. 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 Yeah, beta, beta, beta. It was the first uh, Linux version of Left 4 Dead 2 that showed up. It was the beta for the beta for the beta. <laughs> so do I still have Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2 beta? or No, you just have Left 4 Dead 2. The, the, uh, the beta injury is gone. It's uh, I honestly don't know why it was still there. It's not like they were actively updating it or anything. No, no, no. No, well, no, 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 no. Let's absolutely face the fact, that simple thing of like, you, you had Left 4 Dead 2, and then you had, why the hell is this there? Uh, <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, no I, I i guarantee someone was like going through like the list of games and like oh wait that shouldn't be there Doop. <laughs> because, because like that's like we, we have the actual client out you can go da- buy and download left for dead 2 yeah. on linux right now and probably not pay more than ten dollars for it um well you can see maddie is like I, left I, for dead 3 and i'm like do you remember guys like billions of years ago in the two. futures past uh when we saw those screenshots of like the manor Mm-hmm. That were supposedly left for Brad 2.5 on the Source 2. Where the fuck's well, that business, son? Yeah, I, I mean, like, I really like we're, those we're, screenshots. We're waiting, on, we're waiting on someone who at, at Valve is bored enough to finally check out that repo <laughs> and be like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna get uh, Left for Dead 2 running on Source 2 because I'm bored and Valve pays me to just fuck around with this shit. Oh, yeah. man. No, it could be, you know, the, the, the fact that the beta is gone, it could be that Valve is finally releasing the Source 2 version of uh, Left 4 Dead. <laughs> I almost got through that. Uh, no, 
Mm. They're, no, they're fucking not. So I didn't quite expect this, but this happened. Sega Mega Drive and Genesis Classics. Um, free update, new features, uh, the biggest one. Mac and Linux support. Yeah, that's the thing. We're talking old school, retro. Uh, Stuff 16. you can play in gens. Hey, man, VR support that doesn't work on Linux. And it mm-hmm. is a... But hey, we're looking at like Golden Axe, Sonic 2. I was kind of excited. Now, the first thing I saw was... Fuck that noise, twenty nine ninety nine. But that's uh fifty fifty nine items, so it's not that bad. It's not it's not too bad. It's still in, in Canada dollars, it's thirty five dollars. And through methods through a couple various methods, I own most of these games already. So mm-hmm. I the 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 you, Ven, you pointed it out, but they were adding some really nice to have feature that didn't really work too well. The 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 online multiplayer. This this is definitely a thing, man. I mean, because that multiplayer had me curious. I was like, oh, Sonic 2, shit, we can get some trouble on the live streams with that. Um, or just like straight up Golden Axe, man. That, yeah, that's a blast. Absolutely. Yeah. And I was wondering, hmm, how, how does that work? Uh, old, old man uh, Jim Sterling did a little video I saw earlier this mm-hmm. week. Oh, fuck this thing. I neo-dodged bullet on that because, all right, the matchmaking's junk. First of all, I mean, just like performance and functionality, it's junk. It's bad times. Worse than that, it only does randos with matchmaking. You can't select mm-hmm. who you play, and you can't f- select what game you want to play. You just basically go into this queue of like WTF, mate, and hope somebody <laughs> agrees. And then, <laughs> then you hope they just don't nope, like three, so you know, they don't rocket car your ass, right? Yeah, and it's... Uh... The multiplayer, it's Steam. Steam works. Multiplayer should be, you know, a requirement if you're putting your game on Steam because the, that ability of going to the overlay, right click your friend, join game, that's very nice. We like that. We like that a lot around here. Oh, and the rewind so, feature in there only shows for one player. It only shows for the host. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> nope. <laughs> So if you're playing, uh, you'll have to wait until the server catches you up, and all of a sudden your character is magically teleported. Uh, that that sucks, because I would have given you yeah. some money. Um, yeah, yeah. That, that, that's a little sad. I totally want online multiplayer Golden Axe. That is, that is my jam. <laughs> Could have been a thing. Uh, yeah. Battle Chasers. You were the chosen one. Battle Chasers. Battle Chasers. All right. Yeah, sorry, our prequel memes is uh, leaking. This is Battle Chaser Night Wars. This is from Airship Syndicate and THQ Nordic. And it's um it's a dungeon crawling Final Fantasy style uh RPG, uh, which we don't really have too many of those on Linux. And mm-hmm. this this piqued my interest because I like the style of game. Well, I can like the style of game, it depends on how well it's actually done. And it looks reasonably well, or it looks reasonably good. It has some interesting character design. Um and yeah, it it's it's a turn based RPG on Linux. I'm all about that. I'm I, the the thirty two dollar price tag thirty three dollars is a little steep, but if it if it's solid and the reviews seem to indicate that it is a pretty solid game, then I may just yeah. pick it up before they uh, send us some keys. When the when the game first came out, I remember going, "Oh crap, is that on Linux?" And I looked it up, and it wasn't. They said that a Linux version would be coming later on, and well, it only took him what. Six months? Meh, that's all right. Well. Uh, well. Keep going. Well. <laughs> Cal- uh, no, it's a... Uh, well. Wait, 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 we can we can run this whole skit out. Turn-based <laughs> RPGs are my jam. I like them. I like them very much. Uh, you probably... If you didn't see my uh, Fallout 2 stream, you can go watch it, because it won that week. Hey. <laughs> uh, it's a... Uh, it's, I, I, I'm curious. Honestly, I am. And I did send the developers an email. They haven't replied yet, so I may have to buy it myself. Hey, uh, <laughs> I will say this. THQ Nordic, pretty good about getting out Linux ports uh, to Pedro's point. Bucking eventually. But mm-hmm. <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, blast from the past, man. Blast Indeed, from the ass, you mean. It's... Postal Redux, not Postal 2. This is the first one, the isometric one. And uh, it's they're still updating it. Uh, I guess they don't really want to work on new games, the fine folks at uh, Running With Scissors. So update 4.3.0, 
is out. It's available on the Linuxes. You also have the um, official soundtrack if you just like to listen to the um, postal soundtrack. Official soundtrack. I, I, I don't know why you would, but hey, maybe it's your jam. Um, they do have some new stuff with the, uh, with the new update. Uh, it's available on Linux. It already was, but whatever. Uh, cross-platform multiplayer, that's good. And Steam Cloud Saves, also very good. Uh, fully localized into simplified Chinese. Uh, let's see. They fixed a couple of bugs. Uh, let's see, I had one in the newts. Yes, uh, you can actually see the characters in deathmatch mode because if you ever tried to play deathmatch mode in um, Postal Redux, all you would see were just HP bars and player names. That's been fixed. They're gone now. How are you identifying your character now? <laughs> um, um, Airwolfkin. Uh, <laughs> it's postal, man. You know what postal is. This is less pixely postal. That, that's basically about yeah. all I can, can say you about. Can on things? It's eight ninety nine. So if that's an upgrade path you want to take, go for it. Dying Light. Uh, say what you want, man. They are good about putting out content drop number 10. Not much to this one, though, is there, Pedro? No, there isn't. It's uh, it's the buggy skin for the Badlands Rider, uh, and a couple of variants for the shotgun, the crossbow, and the machete. That's it. So this guy kind of looks like a like they 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 took the model for Mad Max out of the Mad Max game, and like tried to make it not copyright infringy. I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh. Yeah, that's basic. I had had that feel. The one thing, fuck you, game. You need to let me play the expansion without having to finish the main mission because I'm like stuck in a really jacked up spot, and um, I, I can't get through it. But um, this, how long do you think until we see like a battle royale version? I don't know. Like that, that, that might be a thing. A lot of games are sort of taking that tack because it's the new hotness. And in 2019, there's going to be, I don't know. It's going to be like baking simulators that everyone's going to be into. So who knows? Um, I mean, it's, it's a thing. I, I mean, and, and that's the thing about, uh, that's the thing about, um, this fucking game dying light is they did, they did a pair, fairly significant 180 Cause when it first came out on the Linuxes, it was just awful. And now, they actually have like some decent support. They're releasing expansions for it, their DLC and so on. That's relatively playable according to you guys, anyways. So indeed. Uh World to the Vest, uh, it's Batman. They even said it. They're like, yo, uh, you thought we forgot about the game. It's like, I forgot about oh, it. Oh yeah. It's it's always it's always fun to like look for updates that uh, for games that we like threw chairs at a mm-hmm. couple like a year or two ago. Cause then I have to like find the one LGC show notes doc. I actually wrote down what I thought about the game, uh, but they've been, they've definitely been busy in a year. They have if you go through this list, it's a lot of uh, AI and bug fixes. Apparently, um, uh, yeah, lo- lots of lots of performance improvements. Uh, lots of map um, map issues have been resolved. Um, but the the one thing the one thing I did notice when I went back and read our review was that all of us were basically complaining about how the controls are terrible. Mm-hmm. I tried to play it on like the DualShock Four and it just wasn't having it. So I'm curious. I haven't reinstalled it and checked it out just yet, but I'm curious if they've actually addressed a lot of the controls issues because they're not explicitly mentioned here, but they're but performance improvements may result in better input. Who knows? I certainly don't. I mean, they they put it in moon speak. Well, that was part of one of the updates, right? Yeah, the J- Japanese uh, support uh, some water water stuff. Um, apparently, when they they got rid of that stutter when you save the games, and I mean, yeah, it, it's good to see, it's good to see that they just haven't straight up forgot about this thing, right? So uh, it might be something to go back and check because I mean, it was clearly a well done game, a lot of love, but it had a shitload of technical issues. So mm-hmm. good on them. All right, I think it's going to do. Uh, we got to go into the new games now, but hang on, yeah, Pedro, are you going to continue trying to communicate with us? And when it comes to new games, well, there's one thing that uh, Steam has been prolific on. I've already mentioned it uh, tonight. It's uh, it's a visual novel. Yes. And, uh, one this one, this which one contains... doesn't have anime boobs, though. Just anime dicks. 
Yeah, anime dicks. Uh, there's See, uh, dicks. Definitely... We didn't grab any dicks. <laughs> hey, man, listen, at least it's, it's staying in the time-honored tradition of really shit drawing. Uh, it man. is. And uh, this one is uh, even more nightmare fuel than usual because this one is Dr. Frank's I see what you did there. Build a boyfriend. And it's, yeah, you're basically building a Frankenstein monster boyfriend. And you get to pick and mix and match parts, I assume. It's a visual novel. You probably just click next and the game plays itself. Because that's what most of them are. Well, I, I mean, that, that, was, that was my thought when I first saw this. was like, <laughs> now, that, now that porn games are not being aggressively targeted on Steam. Here's a Rocky <laughs> Horror prequel. Um, <clears throat> yeah. That, 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 that's pretty much it. You're building Rocky in seven days. You'll make him a man. You, you can definitely make him a man. Hey, it's priced to sell it free. So maybe we'll play. There, there, there's a live stream idea for you. Pedro. Yeah, re, re, bring bring back uh, Reading Rain Blow. Oh, <laughs> dark times. Uh, <laughs> Die for Valhalla is a thing. Die for Valhalla. It's a side scrolly beat em up um, taking place in. A very in a generic Nordic Viking realm, um, kind of get a bit of a um, Charlie murder vibe from it. Mm. But um, the the twist here is that there's some Lovecraftian elephant elements. Lovecraftian elephants. That's a show title. <laughs> then, <get> on that. <laughs> um, call up Thulu. <laughs> All right. Um, they have they have they have a regular mode and a rogue like mode. And come on, guys. They tacked on online multiplayer to Charlie Murder, and you can't do this for your game. Like, here, here, here's the thing. The Steam Couch experience isn't usually one you have friends over for. Yes, it's nice that you have local multiplayer. Hey, they're using SteamOS as a system requirement. They have that going for them. Yeah, and, or, or Debian 8, which is, which is good on them for that. Um, it's definitely a thing. You can pick it up for around 10 bucks. at 17% off now, up until... Fifth, uh, the fifth of June. So it's st you still got uh, until about Tuesday to pick this up for cheap. If this is up your alley, hey man, you were saying like, it looks like a uh, Charlie Murder and all that business. Kind of looks a wee bit like a mobile game too. Yeah, may, the, the def <laughs> definitely the art style of like they 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 drew some sprites and now it's just on some weird flat non matching background. I can definitely see that. Mm -hmm. All right, um, super deathmatch, proper multiplayer. <laughs> yeah, super super deathmatch is <laughs> okay. Have you ever wanted to play a game nope. where you are a ball sitting on top of a Rubik's cube? You have my attention. Where your where your your one goal it's to smash into other balls also on a Rubik's cube. Then boy, do I have your prayers been answered? Um, yeah. The, um, honestly, like the 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 one thing I thought of when when I was watching the trailer is like. A, this reminds me of a mini game that they included in Pokemon Soul Silver for gaining battle points. <laughs> and, two, and and two, every time if I if we play this game, every time I win, I'm just gonna be like, and circle gets the square. <laughs> I'm so clever. No, it's it's 15% uh, off right now. It's early access. It's it's a thing, right? They uh, again, they don't have online multiplayer, which to me is the Why? biggest crime of this. <laughs> Come on, you want people to play your rage game make it so that they can play it with their friends so they can scream at each other over the internet it right just, yeah. seems like a smart it seems like the the only decision you can make there right well i mean it's got a bunch of stuff thrown together well here's my argument for that and it is available for linux even though it's not showing on the store they have a linux depot is even if you're talking about multiplayer room to room like you and three of your flatmates are going to play What's more fucking likely? Everyone like building a game rig or just using online multiplayer to play in your individual rooms? Isn't that right, Stoic Pedro? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> now there's just me. <laughs> Only me. There were infinite use for a minute, man. Uh, one last bit before we get out of this. Uh, Fo Foxy sent this one in, yeah? Uh, Arthurian sent this one in. Oh, it was Ar Arthurian. Yeah, yes. it's mm -hmm. cleverly disguised right next to the title where it says Arthurian. Um, Hush you. Machiavellian, man. It's an evil mansion management strategy game. Basically, this is ooky spooky prison architect. Um, all the horror movie cliches, build your own manor, raise your monsters, set up your traps, and exterminate your victims. Um, but to gain reps, you have to stay 
by the horror movie rules, which basically means a uh, casting couch, right? <laughs> yeah. Why don't you take your pets off and sit on this black leather couch? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I mean, like, it, it, it's an interesting take, right? Yeah, because you can, I can build my haunted mansion where it's like, yeah, it seals you into a room and dumps it full of nerve gas. Congratulations, you're all dead. But that's not, that's not a very fun horror movie, so I get why they're trying to do that. Yeah, it's Dungeon not. Keeper. Dungeon Keeper used to be a thing. It used to be popular. Uh, I could see how this fits uh, very much into that uh, same genre. It would appeal to the same people until you start arbitrarily forcing uh, people to build their horror mansion in a specific Haunted way uh, to not to you know be better as a like a dungeon keeper you built like the ultimate dungeon that no adventurer could ever get through and here you have to be specific and you have to do specific things i guess that sort of kind of explains the uh, neutral uh reviews that it's been getting i i just had a horrifying idea for like a dungeon keeper thing the one thing that will ensure that no no hero will ever ever get through your dungeon at the beginning microtransactions Ooh, sexy yeah. That could be a thing. <laughs> All right, get us the hell out of here, man. All right, coming up next, we got some regular ass news. We're going to talk about the latest release of the Atari 2600 because apparently it's 1979 and I'm not <laughs> born yet. No! This has been a. Uh, we've only done one. Uh, <laughs> We've only done one Kaboom. segment up to this point. Before birds, and, yes. Uh, oh before God, Jitsi from chest. starts any more fires, I'm going to let Jordan do his thing <laughs> and thank all of you. Can you give us those people. mad rhymes, osteoferocious. <laughs> osteoferocious. <laughs> Yo, I'm osteoferocious and I'm here to say, <laughs> drink your milk or your bones will go away. Man, you you can you can fund my upcoming <laughs> rap album by heading on over to LinuxGameCast.com, clicking the, <laughs> the shows and button. We got a bunch of links for you to click. Uh, several of them will allow you to enter your credit card number. You should totally do that, or at least you know give us a cut for say Humble or Amazon affiliate links. Lots of affiliate links over there, so you can just help us out by doing your daily shopping. Maybe if you're using the Amazon grocery sh- service, you can give us a cut. And then, I don't know, we'll show up on the side of your milk carton. But the cool people, all of them, they go to patreon.com slash the to support the show. Brings you a lot of cool stuff like access to our show notes, the ability to suggest stories, the ability to have input in the show, uh, guaranteed RSVPs for live streams, and most importantly, access to Discord, that stuff that you're seeing on the screen occasionally. Um, it's also funding the five weekly streams that we do. So you can you don't have to go... a you only have to go at most two days without Linux Gamecast in your life. <laughs> I don't know if this is a problem or yet. Yeah, no, man, it is. It is a problem. Listen, man, it could be a problem. And in fact, you know, if we can get like six, six new patrons, we might reduce the amount of streams we do. Aha, we yeah. Do. <laughs> yeah. No, if, if, we, if we don't make it to 300 by the end of the month, we're adding four more streams, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, check it out, beautiful people. One thing we do like to do is uh, if you're a new patron or if you increase your pledge, we give you a little shout out. Like uh, we need to think of the Norse God of dreadlocks, uh, Frizo. Yeah, the, yeah. That dude from music brains, uh, he increased his pledge. Um, it's, it's good. We, we literally cannot do this without you. Ven, you have some new goodies for people though. You know, we tried, uh, we're working on it. Uh, it's going to be an absolute shit show of what you get this week because it, 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 trust me, there, there was much fire before we started, but there's much fire during the podcast. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're going to be adding a couple of things because instead of, uh, like some people, we're not slamming anything behind a paywall, but we're going to be like, hey, we're going to add some extra stuff for our Patreons. Uh, the pre pre super shows, and once we get all the bugs hammered out, is now going to be video. So you can watch the fire <laughs> as we're trying to put it out. That's going to be fun. And one thing I experimented with last week, a lot of people got back to me like, hey, this is going to work because I was shaking down. We're also hard mode 1804 LTS upgrade on the system on our render box right now. So, you know, just to make things interesting. One of the things I did was I took our entire show and made what I called, uh, you know, just to shake down the box, Linux Gamecast minus Linux Gamecast, which is our pre-show, uh, the segments in between, and our after show condensed into a podcast feed. And I put that up and they're like, oh, man, that's cool to listen to because you don't have to, you know, because our uncut version, which you get access to, 
is just everything. This is just all the mm-hmm. bullshit bits in between where we discuss things like, uh, what was the fucking chemical called? Uh, sulfur hexafluoride. <laughs> there we go. That'll be the title of this week's, um, Linux Gamecast minus Linux Gamecast. But yeah, if you find this nonsense enjoyable, consider kicking us a few shackles, throw them in our face, help fuel this nightmare, and we can give you some of that bonus. Sweet, sweet bonus soda. And thanks to everyone. As Jordan said, man, shopping through the Amazon links, buying stuff through the Humble, man, or just sharing the show. That's awesome, because this shit's expensive, yo. But... We, we like to catch on for, I could adjust that chat thing. I just noticed that it's kind of brilliant. Okay. Let's get into the news. No more ads. Was that an ad? Does that count as an ad? We're like, Hey, yeah, thanks. It's, it, it's shameless self-promotion. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Time, to, time to promote something else like wood. You like wood, Ven? Hey man, check it out. Atari specs revealed. It is a thing. Uh, this is from WCCF tech, all this business in our show notes. What do we got inside? Oh man, I'm not making this shit up. This is a Bristol Ridge APU, four gigajoules of RAM. The regular base units, 200 wet stinky caches. However, you can pay $100 more for exclusivity and some wood stuck to the fucking front of it. I mean, if... I love wood. Giggity. It's so hard. <laughs> but I do gotta say, man, uh, listen, I, I wish this project the best of luck. I do, but we got to say this, and I know we've said it before. This is an Indiegogo campaign. This is not on Kickstarter. To, you know, if you're new to this business, you're like, the fuck's that? There's just two competing sites. There's one big difference between Indiegogo and Kickstarter, Pedro. Yeah. Uh, on Indiegogo, you don't have to have an actual prototype of the thing you're trying to crowdfund. Now, yeah. here, here this, this just popped into my brain, because... I am more confident in this actually existing eventually than I am the smach. <laughs> I feel that this I is, think it's going to be I feel a that this is a much honest. more realistic goal than the smach zero ever was. <laughs> so um but yeah, uh they 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 announced some uh rough specifications. They're gonna be uh four gigs of RAM, some EMMC storage. Uh you're gonna be able to expand that uh because it has some ooze ports Mm -hmm. it's gonna be running ubuntu but the kind of disappointing thing for me is running a bristol ridge apu means Mm -hmm. that it's not it doesn't have the new ryzen sauce this is like the old ass right uh the the old apus um the bulldozer pile driver ones so here's here's the thing though i mean for a lot of like the the sort of games that i think this is targeting like um the hollow knights or the rogue legacies or stuff like this this is more than sufficient to run it i would think you think this thing could run hollow knight really yeah Hollow Knight's that not that intense. Hollow Knight runs on Intel integrated graphics on an Intel CPU, so yeah. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, but uh, and I, I mean, like they're they're saying, oh, it'll have built-in streaming to Twitch TV and it's built-in Discord because you know Electron is so hard to get working under Ubuntu, <laughs> man. It's just the worst. <laughs> um, it's it's apparent. Um. Uh, yeah, the, it's it's coming with the the classic controller and the 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 newfangled wired one that kind of just looks like a crappy uh, Switch Pro controller. Yeah, based on uh, the render there. If you there. want the uh, fancy controller, you need to pay the extra hundred bucks for the so-called exclusivity. You do, and then that looks it's like what do they look like? I know you're listening on the audios. They look like a regular fucking controller with a big ass Atari button from the joystick, like mm-hmm. weirdly put on it in a bright orange ass color. Uh Will this get made? Yeah, it'll probably end up getting made because they made two million plus dollars on this mm-hmm. in the first day, basically, and with the pre-orders. So, I I hope everyone gets one, and I, I hope everyone's happy with it. I yeah. hope they actually use that money for the actual pre-orders, and they don't just uh, I don't know do a double fine and uh, hire. Elijah Wood, for some reason. <laughs> well, the, the, why, why do you think they, they're charging so much for the extra wood, right? It's just straight up Elijah Wood. <laughs> Coming up next, you know what you love? it. It's the dark mode. No, the dark mod. Dark mod. No, man, it's mod. dark mode. Qu- don't dare question me, boy. Um, <laughs> That's racist. Total conversion of Doom 3. It's basically fucking Thief, isn't it? And yeah, that's thief. how it started. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> They get a new version of the Doom 3 engine. Yeah, originally released in 2009. It's been making steady progress. This is 2.06, 64-bit build, 
better visuals, better sound, better menus, new S sets. Um, it looks all right. I downloaded it. This is, we were talking about stuff that, and look, they even have a horse, man. They fixed horse turning. I mean, <laughs> their horse is amazing. Give it a lick, man. It, that, that adds, makes me so happy. I don't even know. Better gameplay, better mission intros. So this is completely free and download it and it pulls its resources. It runs. It has that going for it. Uh, it is noticeably faster though. And I, I mm-hmm. do mean this on a 1700 Ryzen with a 980. That's not saying a whole lot because the previous version ran like poop, but it can now hold a solid 60 plus FURPS at 1080p, which is progress. Yeah, and I mean, a lot of that probably has to do with the fact that they ripped out a lot of the old ass OpenGL and they're using uh, updated modern OpenGL. They actually have a 64 bit build as well as I'm reading on the page here. I don't know. Dark Mod was one of those things where it's like, where I was always gonna give it a give mm-hmm. it a whirl once it starts getting like more mature, but now I don't know. I've kind of, I'm, it, it's it's a great project. Um, they, mm-hmm. They've done a lot of good work with uh, the open source uh, ID Tech Three engine. Um, they, they're they're constantly they're constantly pushing what like open source games can actually do in terms of quality, which is something that we quite frankly appreciate. That and this and Zero AD, I think, are the two big ones. Yeah. Yeah, and it's uh, it's good to see the performance improvements because last time I tried to play this game, uh, uh, the single player, like the original Thief campaign, wasn't finished. So I started playing some community levels, and there were some really interesting ones, but the performance was... Well, it wasn't ass, because at least the Atomic Ass seems to have consistent performance, but it no, was No, he doesn't. <laughs> no, he doesn't. No, sir. <laughs> Get out there and try it. Um, you might like it. Open source thief. Think about it this way. So, let's talk about one of our favorite topic topics. New word. Topics. Uh, the topics. <laughs> this is a very topical show this evening. The uh, something I like to lovingly call cryptic feral bullshit, and we're still doing mm-hmm. this in 2018. Cryptic clues on Mac OS, Linux, and mobile. The feral radar is designed to pick up signals from incoming games. Sometimes, uh, um, mm-hmm. seriously, like even who was it? Ellie Feral on Reddit was like, I don't know that fucking thing works. It's <laughs> just pay attention to our announcements. True story, but there's a new thing on the uh, cryptic feral bullshit door. Um, I'm over this so fucking hard. It burns, man. And, you know, if we're just going to be real, it's, it's fucking Hellblade, guys. It, it, that was the I, speculation. I, I hope it's Hellblade. Yeah. I, I, was, I was going through, like, the list of games that, like, um, people who have traditionally partnered with um, Feral have is. released. Mm-hmm. And so, so um, what, what was it? It's some, it's some reference to Dante's in Proud Seat of Lucifer. Yeah, Proud Seat of Lucifer. So here's the thing. Uh, there was a Dante's Inferno game made by someone who has traditionally partnered with Feral in the past. Mm-hmm. So I'm really hoping it's not that because that was just a crappy like God of War clone. Yes, it um, was a really, really crappy one. Yeah. <laughs> But give, give, I just want to talk about the cryptic feral bullshit because I, okay. I I agree. I'm pretty sure that this is just like some senior marketing guy who's been there forever thinks this is an awesome idea when everyone else is saying it's stupid. Don't do it. It no, is. But I mean, listen, ultimately, it, it's achieved its goal because we're talking about it. This Yeah, this is this is true, <laughs> but. It it does feel it, it, the that, speculation. That, that sort of could be bit. facilitated in a, any number of ways beyond ooh, something's coming. Ooh, it's Satan. Ah. They could have just said, you know, oh look, this game is coming. We're not saying when it'll be out when it's out. Speculate. Be nice. I don't know, man. Here, listen, I'm thinking about it like this. It's probably some total snore, whatever, skin pack, or something something from Squeenix, Square Unix, uh, something from their backlog. That's not Final Fantasy. Yeah. Hmm? No, nothing done by uh, Square Enix from Japan. Square yeah, Enix, all, all, U.S.? North, North American. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> they're, 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 they're actually in Quebec, so yeah. Not okay. Adam. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you, 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 Feral, you guys could always go back and fix Tomb Raider and make it playable. Yeah, well, I, I mean, the, 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 the one guy who may have done that uh, might not be isn't isn't available. Anymore. Oh, went, speaking of, he went somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. peace out, uh, bitches. This, yeah, this is uh, from MD Louis MD Isla's 
Mark from Feral. He used to be one of their main Linux guys. We covered that he left. And it turns out he left to go to Unity. They're making game engines now. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? If, if you're if you're like really really into game development then kit bashing existing games to work with another operating system may eventually lose its luster maybe at some point you want to actually work on some um something that will actually be used in many games something that's actually reusable but I, I i have a question for you does this mean that the vulcan implementation on unity is going to get better or worse yes um Hey, yeah. I'm kind of with you. Definitely an interesting move when we look at this. And yeah, it does make sense. I mean, if uh, the lad's passion is Linux gaming and also you're definitely future proofing because porting houses like Feral and Aspire and stuff like that. As Aspire is already like shit. We're turning into a publisher because you can see the writing on the fucking walls, man, because tools like Unity, tools like Unreal Engine 4, Godot, it's... 10 years from now, it's not going to be five years from now. It's probably not going to be much of an issue at all outside of the couple of, you know, development houses that still do custom engines to get your game on Mac, Linux, mobile and the lot. Yeah. And moving to unity makes sense because unity already has a pretty strong Linux base as it were. It's uh, questionable uh, whether or not the people who use unity uh, know how to Linux because most of them don't. And we see their results often, but it's good on him going to, uh, going to unity, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, no, that was, possibly the best choice because unreal they don't seem to like linux very much they just <clears throat> deal with it because they have to <laughs> well you 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 raise an you raise an interesting thing as well that got me thinking um we, we, we were talking we were talking last week about that kickstarted good dough course like mm -hmm. maybe a, a lot of the issues that come with like oh well this U unity game x doesn't work particularly well under linux or so on basically boils down to the fact that we don't actually train developers to develop cross-platform applications so maybe some sort of Ed, some sort of education system like yeah. a like a tutorial series or like courses say like this is how you write a game that will that will be portable that way you can support as many platforms as possible and make as much money as you can yep indeed uh one last bit before we get out of here yeah. One teeny tiny bit submitted by a Mr. Fox Dog, mm -hmm. Foxy. So uh, another. Wait, was it the ZX Spectrum that gave it away, or? <laughs> <laughs> pretty, pretty much. <laughs> yeah, uh, Foxy. If you don't know, he has a YouTube channel of his own, and he likes to delve into the old systems. Uh, this one is the project that is attempting to reverse engineer a classic ZX Spectrum game, The Great Escape. And that's what they're doing. They threw the raw image at a disassembler, and they're trying their damnedest to translate the results into C. Well, you definitely and want to throw it out. It's one person's project they've been working on since 2012. They've taken the DOS binary and the actual tapes and mm -hmm. slowly got it together to convert everything into C. Currently runs. It's missing a few things, but mm -hmm. uh, there be dragons because I mean it's confirmed to compile on Windows and it's confirmed to compile on Mac. No word on Linux, but I guess it's doable. I, so. I give it a it crack. Doable. It, it, it generates a make file, but um, there's some issues with the include directory. I'm trying to. I don't want to dive too deep into how to make <laughs> CMake include specific directories <laughs> in the build path. That's about where I stopped. <laughs> They uh, they actually mentioned in the C project GitHub that uh, the Clang builds are linked against a stub of the main function. So, yeah, that won't fly. Hmm. No, it, it, it doesn't <laughs> when it's looking for ZX Spectrum dot H. I think I actually... <laughs> No, no, I, I straight up have, I still have the freaking make file open in, in Emacs. I'm, I'm still <laughs> looking through it. So, I'll just see cares. Uh, all right. Uh, yeah, that's 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 gonna do it for the news. Coming up next, we're gonna get jacked into the matrix. Well, we're gonna get jacked. That, that's about as far as I'll let you know from now. I keep telling you people that strange women in ponds distributing swords is no basis for determining leadership. <laughs> <laughs> 
Who don't See, listen if to Pedro, if Pedro like came out of a pond and lobbed a scimitar at me, I don't think I would con- consider myself the king of Albion. But you could <laughs> maybe give it a try in Albion Online. It's from Sandbox Interactive GM Buch. It's developed on the Unity engine. You can pick it up for um, if you're in the UK, twenty one ninety five. If you're in the US, thirty bucks. If you're in Canada, forty dollars. Uh, what is it? Albion Online is a fantasy sandbox memorpaga featuring a player driven economy, classless combat system, and intense PvP val- battles. Explore a vast open world of danger and opportunity. Grow your wheel, forge alliances, and leave your mark on the world of Albion. So uh, Pennywise bought us some uh, copies of this because he. Uh, was feeling particularly generous, so uh, we decided mm-hmm. to take a crack at it this week. This is the Cherokee edition. This is where we take a game, we uh, play it for a little while, talk about it, maybe do a little bit of quality assurance that the uh, developer should have done before making it an actual paid product, and then giving a recommendation whether you should buy or not, based on everyone's favorite bit of furniture, flamingos. Now, I'm talking about lawn chairs. One chair means that it's garbage. Two chairs means that it's meh. Two chairs means that it's pretty good. Four chairs means that it's awesome. And we apply it to our categories of doom, mixed with the working, shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So let's kick this off. Ven, how, how, tell, tell us about your, your wonderful adventure getting this game working. Hey, man, I'm going to get in and out, and then I'm going to fuck around for the rest of this segment because I don't have much to contribute. Uh, listen, I tried to play it. I did. And... Well, it it didn't work because I'm using uh, one of those edgy, hot new distributions that all the kids are into. It's rolling release, and no, I'm not. I'm using fucking Ubuntu eighteen oh four LTS. And they, they got a solution. They got a solution uh, to a known issue to make the game work out of the box with Steam. No love, no joy. Do not pass go on this. Uh, but if you go to the web zone, download a patch client. And that supposedly works until it doesn't. Then you wait for them to upload another one. Then maybe that one supposedly works. The launcher itself, the big hangup I saw was compiled against QT571, which is also bugged on high, di- high DPI display, uh, displays. English fan, uh, if they'd compiled against 5.9x, uh, kind of would have sort that. But this is a known issue with 18.04. They're aware of it. And their response is, meh, shrug. Like, it might get fixed. It might not. I really wanted to give this the Pepsi challenge. So I downloaded the web client. I'm good like that. Uh, it wanted a key. It's like, hey, give me a key. I was like, no, I got, got the game on Steam. I, I got it. Let me link that. And I was like, oh, fuck no. You can't do that. So I was at the 60 plus minute mark of trying to launch the damn game, which I failed to do. Didn't happen. And I tried everything I possibly could because I wanted to play this damn thing. Um, now, I will say this in their defense because I want to be fair. It clearly says on their web zone on Steam, 1404 and 1604 LTS 64-bit or Steam OS is supported. Other distributions may work, but not officially supported. So, yeah, I I genuinely couldn't play it. And once I figure out a few minutes to do the refund system, Pennywise, I'm going to hook you back up with that copy because I can't really do anything with it. But I do thank you. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, well, I ran into the same issue that Ven did, and the solution of downloading the patch client did not work. I still ran into that QT bug you, where you just can't click on anything. Mm-hmm. However, a flat pack version of this game does exist, and that works. Unfortunately, like Ven mentioned, the Steam version and the paid version have different licenses, so you cannot transfer accounts from things bought on Steam to things bought in the standalone copy. So... I because I love you guys. I I went and blew forty bucks and I bought this game a second time. I too will also return the thing to Pennywise because he deserves his money back. And um, if you launch it from uh, Flatpak, it does work. You can play the game. I played it for about for a couple hours. Uh, yeah, I'll be an online guys. If you're going, to, high DPI displays are not too uncommon nowadays. So you should maybe maybe look at uh, some better support for that, Pedro. Yeah, so I think I'm actually going to keep the copy that Pennywise bought me because over here in Solus Land, it worked out of the box. It uh, it holds 60 FERPs at UHD. Uh, when I started the Steam version, it's like, oh, did you have an old account? Yes, I did. Well, put in your email address. Okay, now put in your password. That took a couple of tries, but oh, look, there's my old character. Aha. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, no, uh, it worked just fine for me. So I, I'm gonna keep it. All right, well, that's that's two cheers for a mix with the working, uh, shiny and sounds. I'm just gonna skip Ben because he didn't actually play the game. <laughs> mm-hmm. He he tried. He spent an hour and it didn't work. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. To me, these are like some mid two thousands ass MMO sprites. I mean, things look distinct enough. I can tell the different types of trees apart. So John Cleese is very, very proud of my ass. Uh, there, there, there's definitely some music there. Uh, do I care about it? No, it didn't do. It wasn't good or bad enough to leave any sort of impression. While I sort of drifted into the back of my fugue state while trying to enjoy this game, but I'll save that little bit for later. Pedro, how, how yeah, do you think it looks? Uh... You know, low poly cell shaded graphics. Uh, the music is uh, totally with you on that one, Jordan. It's sparse and non intrusive. It's absolutely forgettable. But when you do hear it and you start paying attention to it, it fits. So that's good. Uh, if I had to pick at the nits, I'd say it's hard to tell things apart, especially shops, because all the stores are a combination of brown and gray. And in when you get into an actual melee or you get into a party with other players, you will lose track of your character, regardless of what you're doing. And enemies have this nasty tendency of running up to you and occupying the same physical space as your character. Uh, so it's it's got issues, but all in all, it's not terrible. <laughs> All right, well, that's uh, that's two chairs for the shiny and sounds controls. I mean, let's, let's be real. It's like a Diablo point and clicky thing, right? Yeah, it is. Uh, yeah, it's, I, I, uh... the, the mouse worked very well as I was trying to get it to launch. <laughs> well, apparently it didn't because you can click on that login button. Well, this is true. Okay, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But like the the I, I I don't know right the Pedro I think you and I are of a mind that the the lack of rotatable camera is a bit confusing let's say yes because this is all three D it's it's Unity you know that the rotating camera is a default option Do, why can't we have that <laughs> yeah it, it it's really fun too when you like I'm gonna walk south and then I mm-hmm. enter from the east and I'm like where, <laughs> where am I I'm so, I'm so confused I don't know what's happening. Yeah, uh, I guess the decision of having the fixed camera is they it was a design choice because if you look at the world map, there's the roads, and if you go out a certain exit grid, uh, you know that the road, even if it turns, let's say you go out to the east and you end up in the south of the new area, it's yeah, it's uh, they made that so it would be, I'm guessing, easy for you to find your way around and easy it's to not, memorize. Though. It's not. I was constantly <laughs> checking the map because I'm like, wait, am I going in the right direction? Did I, did I map a left to an up? <laughs> it it was for me. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Your mileage may vary. <laughs> may vary. The, 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 other, the other issue I had with this game, um, pathfinding can eat a bag of dicks. Your character will get stuck on the most random things and be like, I'm trying to walk through it. I can't do it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to face through walls. I have the yeah, power. Yeah, it's never Winter Knight's level of pathfinding right there. <laughs> yeah, like I, I, I had to, you, ever, you ever see that movie, The Men Who Stare at Goats? I had one of those <laughs> moments. <laughs> uh, okay, well, that's, that's two chairs for control. Uh, I, You know what? I, Pedro, Pedro, you can go through your spiel because you have more positive things to say about this game than I do. Yeah, I'm the only one who has positive things to say. Um, So, it's an MMO. It's uh, from the RuneScape school of MMOs. Uh, But unlike that that bit of inspiration that it very much wears on its sleeve, it's not boring as all fuck. Quite the opposite. Uh, Don't get me wrong, it's not the best MMO out there by any means or measure. Uh, That's never winter online for me specifically, but... uh, if it weren't for the over-reliance on the crafting and basically ensuring you have to fucking do the menial fucking chores to get better loot, this would actually be a very good MMO. As it is, it's good, but there's enough grinding going on here to make the average nightclub look like, you know, it's, it's a place where you go to have respect for your personal space. <laughs> okay, okay, sure. 
that's a that's that's the thing you can say about it. Yeah, see, I I, I was I was just getting into computers uh, when RuneScape was a thing back when it was like mm-hmm. a Java browser game, and I never got into it back in the day. I had a lot of friends who played it, and they seemed to like it, and they were like really engaged with the mechanics and whatnot. But I I just really couldn't grok it, and I don't think age has really improved my ability to do so. Um, I mean, what you run around, you gather resources, you kill villagers, you fulfill quotas <laughs> to unlock things so you could kill more things to fulfill quotas to unlock other things to unlock abilities to get more gear. It's it's a grind fest, and you know what? I'm I can be down for a grind fest. Um, that uh, Battle Chasers Nice War thing is probably going to devolve mm-hmm. into a grind fest. I'm into it because. Uh, you need to you need to be doing the right thing, like having ho- diving through horrible dungeon after horrible dungeon, or making cute like monsters fight for my amusement. You gotta you gotta give me something, right? Yeah. Uh, this this game does not either. You select a thing and then you wait. And sometimes if you get into fights, you get select a thing and then you wait. And sometimes you press a button because you need to activate an ability, and then you press another button to activate another ability and wait for it to cool down, and so on and so forth. There isn't really much here to get me invested. I don't think if you're into <laughs> Well, if you're not into RuneScape MMOs, this is not one of those games that will change your mind. The one MMO I actually kind of really got into was EVE Online. Not even for the spreadsheet thing. It was just because I was in a spaceship and I could fly around. And that was cool. That ticked off that part of my brain where I could just grind there and still be engaged. This does not have any of that. So between Ven and me giving it one share for the fun and Pedro giving it three, this totals out to... um, one chair for fun and one chair total. Uh, the game doesn't really um, work. It has it. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it has issues. Um, maybe maybe they'll fix it. Maybe they won't. Compiling against an old version of QT maybe wasn't the best idea in the world. I think one of the things to look at is this: there seems to be a disconnect between the team releasing patched clients to download from their web zone versus. Whoever is in charge of the Steam account, maybe they just forget their Steam login. I don't know. Or, or I, I think maybe they, there's also like there's a clearance process to get your shit uploaded to Steam, and maybe they don't want to do that over and over and over it, again. It's Steam we're talking about. Clearance process is a hundred bucks up front. Hmm. <laughs> Listen, man, if, if you if you're paying forty nine ninety nine for access to this game, a hundred dollars <laughs> is expensive. But this game, if Ven and Jordan uh, hadn't had as many issues with it just outright not working. It could have been, you know, it could have gotten gotten two chairs. Mm -hmm. It could have gotten certainly a better score than it did. I didn't run into those issues, and I actually managed to enjoy it a little bit. I didn't enjoy RuneScape when I played it, but this one I very much did. There's, It's grindy, but I liked it. I think one of the things they absolutely just need to fix regardless is if somebody fucking buys this on Steam, there needs to be a system, an easy system, to get that shit plugged in to the downloadable mm-hmm. copy. So the, they, they have an entire forum thread about this, because I was looking into it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I, this, is, this is like, lots of games are doing it. This is an intentional design decision. Too bad. This is how we're running our game. Hmm. That that was yep. that was the that was the specific bit of feedback from the developers. So uh, they're they're also asshats outside of being not being able to code their way out of a fucking white paper. Yeah, the, yeah. The, the, it's a Unity game that doesn't work on two out of three distributions we test on <laughs> on this show. So Good make job, guys. that what you will. Coming up next, we're 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 we're, we're going to do a bit of nip slips, nip nippy nippy sip. Hot. And as light eeps in from my window. Eeps? Eeps. Is that, is eeps. that a word? You fucking said eeps. <laughs> I said Leaks. eeps. You fucking clown. You said eeps. Eeks. Eeps. <laughs> you gotta get eep the deep, man. Whatever. Well, if you'd like to uh, point out all of the English cock-ups that I made during the show, you can do so easily by going to linuxgamecast.com, <laughs> hitting the contact button, and filling out the form. It's pretty easy. Make sure you pick Linux Gamecast Weekly or LGC Weekly for the little drop daddy thing. Um, if you're a game developer and you like to send us uh, some keys for your game, you can do that too. Make sure you include at least three or a build that we can share amongst the whole of us. Uh, you can ask for relationship advice. Eep. 
<laughs> and um, eep at eep dot eep. That's that's your email. <laughs> I gotta. I actually want to make that now. Uh, well, in any case, it's uh, it seems that the little uh, disclaimer that Ven put at the top of the page is working. Because uh, we got a developer asking us to review his game. Uh, it could be it's there. Neep. It's Neep. It's Neep. Neep. Not Neep, but Neep. <laughs> Shit. Independent. Uh, Independent. <laughs> who, who wants to take oh, this please. one? I'll take okay. it. Fine. Hi. Uh, yeah. <laughs> from from Yitz, not Shits. From Yitz. He's like, I'm an indie game developer. I happen to enjoy the taste and get your taste in games, man. You haven't watched our shit. Quit, quit our lying tasty to me. games, yeah. Um, Frank Simulator. I was wondering if you might be interested in reviewing the fuck that is an ne- RPG Nepente. Nepente RPG adventure game I made. If not, then I will snick into your house, steal all your potatoes, moha ha ha, triple exclamation points. Wait, is this retroactive? Because I don't have any potatoes in here, so maybe you already came back and you are a potato, Pedro. Stole the you potatoes. You are a potato, motherfucker. I'm a couch potato. That's that's a specific kind of potato. I thought you were going to say brown potato. <laughs> Not touching that. All right. Yeah, so it, it, it's available on Steam. They they, 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 sent, they followed the instructions. Send us some keys. It looks like it's drawn by a fourth grader, but I believe that's part of the aesthetic. Mm-hmm. Um. It's, they describe it Did as an ironic Wait, RPG. Hang on. This game just almost got my attention if that said Hitler. Um, <laughs> no, the Hitler. Secret Hitler. Secret Hitler. <laughs> no. Um, yeah. Uh, so it, it, it's apparently a. Uh, there's an adventure or story mode. Uh, story mode battles are easy one click things. Adventure mode is like a bullet hell type thing. I'm not sure. They did send us some keys, so we are obligated to talk about it. That is the contract that we have wrought with our Dark Lord Satan, and so we bring it to you. It's four ninety nine. It's definitely got a Zelda vibe uh, with the you know the classic uh, Tetris elements of Zelda. <laughs> um, uh, appa- apparently, you have to make sure that your yeah. computer is on if you want to play this. It's borrowing heavily from. Um, oh God, what's that name called? It was a uh, hipster pixel. Was really popular a couple of years ago. Uh, Undertale. Talking about- yes, Undertale. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it borrows a lot of uh, elements from Undertale, and it even has some QTEs. I'm such a big fan of QuickTime. Hey, Vanilla. man, listen, this thing runs on anything made in the last decade OS. But you mm-hmm. need to plug in a toaster into your computer, so we're going to gonna give that a whirl. A toaster. And you if really we review this, trouble. and I'm slightly crispified, uh, he'll know what happened. Uh, additional notes. Make sure your computer is on. So... Mm-hmm. Hmm. I don't know, man. Mm. I don't know. Hey. I kind of want toast now. Then make me some toast. <laughs> make me fries. Why does it smell like toast in here? Thud. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it. We we, get, uh, we had a couple of questions. Uh, nothing that we just couldn't easily answer. And plus, we did like a gang of questions last week. We kind of burnt everything up. So, write us in. Give us some questions, thoughts, hints, allegations. Tell us what we got right. I'm just fucking with you. Tell us what we got wrong, because you know we did a lot more of that. So, on that bombshell, let's give them music. You can always find us around 9.30 Eastern Standard Moon Time. It is awesome. It's brilliant, and it's really none of those things, but we show up anyway. Come join us, if you will. Say hi, Frank. Yeah, that's right, Frank. <laughs> if you want to get in touch with me, add Vin Stone on Twitter, Vin Stone into the Googles. We'll send you my way. I'm on the Google Plus and all that. Um, I'll get back to you. I'll at least read it and let you know I get back to you or something. I don't know how that works. Yeah, I'm Jordan Swung. You can find me inserting various things into toasters. See what the end result is. You can find the results of that at the Burning Fool on Twitter, plus Jordan Swung on Google Plus. And you can find me repeatedly cocking up the English language every single time ever since episode 23 on Linux Gamecast Weekly. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. Plus. I, I just realized, man, if somebody held a loaded gun to my fucking head, I was like, what episode was Pedro first on? It's like, pull the trigger, man. <laughs> <laughs> it was sometime in January 2013. Dude, see, you guys with dates and that, man, that, that's not my fuck it. Let's do some credits. Ha, 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 ha.
I, I, my first episode wasn't even episode one. It was like episode zero point not not whatever beta. Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Listen, Steve-O, it's not my fault you don't know how to fucking read Hebrew translated to German translated to English. It is totes your fault, man. <laughs> Jordan Schwe- that, that, That's anti-Semitic, man. That's not cool. <laughs> Don't try to out potato me. Or what? You'll stick me in the fryer, you German fruit. You, you'll get burned. You, you, you'll get Julian. Wait, do you, can you Julian? Yeah, I guess you can. Can you Julian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you can Julian potatoes. By the way, I could point out that that's what I said, but whatever. What? I don't care. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Clearly, age or sort of thing. <laughs> oh, and so, so I, 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 used, I used to work with this um, this uh, Pakistani woman who was like very, very interested in how to pronounce my last name. Please and let this don't go bad. No, it's it, <laughs> it, 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 it's funny because she's like one of those special people who's a bit of a space oh, case. Oh, um, and I, 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 no, it's not racist. It's not racist. <laughs> um. All, 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 all it was was like I was just trying to explain how to pronounce my last name, and she's like, "But it doesn't make sense. This is you, you spell your name with the C. The C comes before the Wang." <laughs> I, 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 Dying I, fire, ladies and gentlemen. We love you. Bye. Yeah. Five dudes.